Okay, now that we learned how to create the basic cut and fill volumes from our 3D model, let's take a look at doing some more advanced earthwork calculations for things such as existing pavement removal and removal of muck material. Now, in order to do some other uh, advanced earthwork quantities, we need to have either another terrain model or another corridor and have a surface template set up or have some components defined that make up the uh, pavement buildup or the muck material. So the first example I'm going to do here is we're going to go and create an existing pavement removal surface or an existing pavement surface. So I'm going to go into a different drawing now. I'm going to come over to my existing pavement file that I already have set up. So I'm going to select existing pavement.dgn. So inside this file I have the existing pavement surface created and I have a terrain model that represents that existing pavement surface. So here if I zoom out here in my plan view you can see I have an existing terrain model here and that represents my existing pavement surface. Now at this point all we have is a top surface so what I want to do is I want to apply a surface template to it so I can give it some depth so that we can come up with a existing pavement removal quantity for earthwork purposes. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply a surface template to this uh, terrain model here. So I'm going to go up to model detailing. We'll go over to the apply surface template tool. This is going to allow us to select a surface template from our template library. So I'm just going to follow the prompts here. So I'm going to locate my terrain model and select it in 3D. For the apply external clip boundary, I'm just going to select no. I'll left click to accept. And then I'm going to browse to my template library. So I'm going to press the Alt key and the down arrow on my keyboard. That's going to bring me into my default template library. You can see we have a bunch of surface templates here delivered with the product. And I'm going to use existing pavement. You can see the pavement thickness represented here in this preview window. And also note that the uh, feature definition that we're going to be using is called TC existing pavement. And that's going to determine uh, that how this is going to be used for the removal quantity, okay, and the volume option. So I'm going to come over here, I'm going to select that existing pavement surface template and click OK. And I'm just going to left click through the prompts, data point to accept. It's going to apply that surface template to the uh, terrain model, and you can see what that looks like here in the 3D model. So that's our existing pavement surface, or, or, or our existing pavement terrain model, with this surface template applied. So that gives us some thickness, and now we're able to calculate a quantity from that. So let's go take a look at the uh, feature definition and the volume option that's used for that TC existing pavement, so you can get a better understanding of how this is going to function when we go to perform the uh, earthwork calculations or the 3D volumes. So it's going to go down to my feature definition in my mesh category and go to my existing folder and you can see we have TC existing pavement as my feature definition. If we dig into the properties here, you're going to see how this is set up. So this particular one here, we have this set for TC existing pavement, it says unsuitable, it has our cut factor set at one and then we have our split set at false. Well for my split, I want to set this to true. So we want to uh, display the uh, pavement that's being removed with a different symbology than the pavement that's going to be removed and replaced. So if we set this to true, we will get two different symbologies there for when we're in a cut condition or when we're in a fill condition. So this just gives us the ability to split the quantities in the report. So when there's existing pavement that needs to be removed and replaced with the default fill material. You can specify that symbology here. And then for the uh, material that's just going to be removed only, then you can specify that symbology here. So that's what the split does. It just allows us to uh, quantify that and separate it in the report as well as display it graphically um, two different ways in the file when we go to create the 3D cut and fill volumes. Okay, so now let's use the same process to define the muck material that needs to be removed from our project. So I'm going to go up to File, Open, I'm going to browse to my Muck DGN file, click Open. Now I already have a Muck terrain model created. So you can see the shape here represents my area where we have Muck, and this was just draped on our existing surface and clipped out of the uh, 
terrain model. So we just have one discrete area that represents an area where we have some unsuitable material that needs to be removed. Okay, so now again, we're going to use that same process. We're going to apply a surface template to this terrain model so that we can quantify that for our earthwork and 3D volumes. So I'm going to go up to Apply Surface Template, select our terrain model over here, left-click through the prompts. This time when we go into our template library, I'm going to choose a muck surface template. You can see the uh, representation of the depth of that muck material here in the preview window. So let's go and click OK. I'm going to left-click through the prompts add a point to accept. Now you can see the surface template is applied to our terrain model. If we go and review the uh, feature definition for this once again, go down to our mesh folder here to existing. You can see we have TC unsuitable material. And go into our properties. And you'll see that the uh, surface symbology is set here, TC unsuitable material. Then we have the volume option is set for unsuitable, the cut factor, and then the split is set for false. So we got that all set up. So let's close the properties and go back to our volumes drawing. It has our 3D volumes in it. So I'm going to go back to my volumes cut fill for London Road. We're going to open that up. And we're going to reprocess the cut and fill 3D volumes. Okay, so if we go back to our DGN file, you can still see we have our original cut and fill volumes here. Now we need to get rid of those because those don't take into account these removal quantities that we've just uh, created for the existing pavement and the muck. So I'm just going to come over here to my element selector, select the uh, select all button, make sure we're in the right view, do a select all, and delete those graphics out of there. And you can see once I do that, the cross-section will update. I also need to turn my corridor back on here in the 3D model. So I'm going to go back up to Home, go to my Attach Tools, my Reference Files, turn on my 3D corridor for London Road so we get that back. And we're going to reprocess or redo our 3D cut and fill volumes so that we can include these unsuitable materials that we just uh, created. So I need to go to my attach tools again. Let's attach my existing pavement. Make sure you do this in view number one first. So click in view number one. Go up to tools attach. We'll go over to existing pavement. And select muck. And we'll click open. Click OK. Click OK again. We'll attach those two reference files. You can see our muck material comes in and our existing pavement also appears as well. Okay, so if we go, zoom down into the cross-section here, you can see there's our existing pavement surface represented in the cross-sectional view um, using that surface template and that DGN that we just attached. So now let's go ahead and create the 3D volumes once again. So we'll go up to Create Cut Fill Volumes. And once again, we're just going to go through the prompts. So our cut feature definition is going to be Volumes Cut. And for fill, we're going to use volumes fill once again. This time for the unsuitable option, we'll set this to yes because we want to calculate some unsuitable materials. Left click and data point to accept. It's going to go through and create some different 3D volumes this time or some different 3D graphics. Okay, so it's going to look at the muck material. It's going to look at the existing pavement. It's also going to look at the corridor, and it's going to determine where it needs to do these removals. So now if we go into the uh, cross-sectional view here, and you can see that the blue shape here is the fill material. You can see there's also a shape that's being created that represents the existing pavement removal as well in this particular section. And if you zoom into the uh, 3D model, you can see there's some yellow that's poking through, and that represents the existing pavement surface where there's areas of cut. And if we just scroll through the sections a little more, let's get into an area where we have cut and fill and where the existing is kind of colliding or interfering with the, uh, the proposed design so we can explain how this works. So you can see at this section here, uh, we have some of the uh, existing pavement that needs to be removed. But it also needs to be filled back in with some fill material. So you can see that represented here by the blue shape. And if you select or do a right click, you can get to the TC existing pavement replaced. So you can see that's the amount that's going to be replaced and filled back in with uh, default fill material. 
And if I zoom in a little bit closer, you can see where uh, we also have another shape here, which is this yellow shape. That represents the amount that's the uh, that's not going to be replaced. It's just going to be the existing pavements that's going to be removed, and then uh, proposed uh, pavement will be put back in its place. Okay, so that's how that split option works that we uh, mentioned previously. So yeah, there's two different symbologies there, and then when we run the report, you'll see how that's broken out in the report as well. So continue scrolling through some of the sections to get a better idea how this works. So you can see over here. A full cut section we're just totally cutting out or removing that existing pavement at this particular section here so let's go run the report so we'll go over to civil analysis we'll go to quantities report by name boundary it's again just data point to accept since we're not using any name boundaries and we'll get our report that shows up here now let's take a closer look at this report so again we have our cut and fill volumes that are listed here in the report over on the right hand side and again that's in cubic yards because I had set this previously to report cubic yards for our volumes we also have our existing pavement which is reported over here and that's the total existing pavement and then if we go down to the bottom here scroll all the way down you can see we have the TC unsuitable material and that's the volume of our muck material okay so this is just the quantities that it's reporting from the 3d model now if we want to see the uh, the split breakdown between the existing pavement removed and replaced and not replaced we need to come over to our volume style sheet here select that and then you can see the breakdown of the quantities in this style sheet are a little bit differently it breaks out the existing pavement replaced and the existing pavement not replaced and then the total existing pavement quantity and then down at the bottom here you can see we have the TC unsuitable material which represents our muck material and you can see the quantity there If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.